How's it going guys? I'm James from Kit Guru. Welcome back to the channel. The Castle EX CPU cooler is one that I'm quite familiar with. I actually reviewed the 240mm version around about this time last year. There's also a 360mm version in the range and now Deepcore has added this 280mm version that we'll be reviewing today. We are still actually waiting for confirmation of the price of this 280mm Castle 280EX but we expect it to be sat somewhere in between the 240mm and the 360mm. So at the moment you can buy the 240 for around £120 and the 360 is £140. So we're expecting this to be somewhere around the £130 mark when it's launched. So Deepcool actually design and manufacture their own all-in-one CPU coolers. They're not just another Acertec rebrand. Um, the Castle EX series is actually powered by a three-phase motor, the pump is powered by a three-phase motor, and Deepcool claims that this is their most powerful pump to date. It's got a maximum speed of around about 2,500 RPM and relatively low noise levels at around 17 decibels. The body of the pump housing is made up of kind of a dual chamber design. We've seen this with other all-in-one CPU coolers from other manufacturers, and we expect that this is to kind of get around or to not infringe on the Acertec patent. Uh, as well as that, you've also got at the base of the cooler a large micro-channel copper coal plate and in terms of CPU socket support, this covers all mainstream desktop platforms from Intel and AMD, including Intel's new LGA1200 platform and AMD Ryzen TRX40 Threadripper platforms as well. The radiator of the Castle EX uh, is equipped with Deepcool's anti-leak design, so that means inside the radiator there's an EPDM bag which kind of contracts and expands depending on the pressure inside the radiator. That's put in there to eliminate or to reduce the chance of a leak. And then at the top of the CPU block there's a removable plastic cover with a kind of two-way mirror glass effect. Uh, you can remove this top cover and then gain access to the Gamer Storm logo that's below and that allows you to kind of move the Gamer Storm logo to a different orientation so it's always kind of facing the correct way depending on how you have it installed inside the system um, as well as being able to change the orientation of the logo that's fitted there's also a blank logo you can either put that in if you don't like the look of the game storm logo or you could even kind of customize that blank with your own logo for you know a higher level of customization inside the system and the only area of rgb lighting on the Castle EX, that's on the CPU block as well. The top portion of the CPU block lights up in different RGB lighting colours and patterns and there's also a thin line that runs around the circumference of the pump body. So you've got two choices with the RGB lighting. You can either connect it directly to a 5 volt 3 pin RGB header on the motherboard or alternatively Deepcool actually includes a really simple um, 3 button RGB hub which allows you to control the different RGB lighting colours and patterns even if your motherboard doesn't support RGB lighting. So it's nice that you've got that option. Not every CPU cooler includes that, so that's you know that's that's a nice thing to see with this kind of CPU cooler at this price range. And then since this is a 280mm cooler, there's obviously two 140mm fans that come included inside the box. These are actually deep cool zone TF. 140S fans and they're said to be specifically tuned to match the properties of the radiator. So they're a high static pressure fan and they run at a speed of between 500 to 1600 RPM and they've got a really nice understated black design. So let's get this Castle 280EX unboxed see exactly what's included and if there's anything different to the previous models. So straight away I've noticed there is a slight difference with the 280X, it's now packed in this dense foam inside the box. The 240mm version that I reviewed previously, that came in like a, a cardboard crate and there was a little bit of damage to that crate that happened during shipping. So obviously Deepcool now use this dense foam to give it a bit of extra protection during the shipping and delivery process which is nice to see and it gives it a bit more of a premium feel when you open the box up. So inside the box with the cooler itself is a small user guide and installation manual. There's a bag labelled Intel and AMD. Inside this bag you've got a universal backplate that covers both platforms. You've got standoffs 
for both AMD and Intel desktop platforms, four thumb screws that hold the CPU block in position, some other screws for the uh, upper mounting brackets, and then another bag with fan mounting and radiator mounting screws. There's another bag labeled AMD. Inside this one, you've got upper mounting brackets for the AMD AM4 platform and TR4, TRX40, as well as some other platform specific standoffs. And there's another bag labeled Intel, again with some platform specific upper mounting brackets and Intel standoffs. There's also three cables that come with the cooler. There's a two way fan splitter, an RGB extension cable that's labeled up with different motherboard brands such as Gigabyte. MSI, ASUS and ASRock. And then there's also this simple three button RGB controller that's ideal for those that don't have RGB headers integrated into the motherboard. There's also this blank logo plate that goes on top of the CPU block. You can use this to either replace the Gamer Storm logo that comes pre-installed or you could even add your own kind of logo to this for further system customization. There's also a deep cool case logo or case badge and there's obviously two GamerStorm TF140S fans and like I said previously these are designed to match the properties of the radiator. Um, along the top you've got a GamerStorm logo and then arrows depicting the uh, direction of the airflow and the direction the fan blades spin. Uh, on the leading edge of the fan blades they've got this extra little kind of uh, fin or spoiler or whatever maybe that's there to try and amplify airflow or could just be there for aesthetic purposes only. These fans run at between a 500 and 1600 RPM and they said to have relatively low noise levels. So obviously take a look at these later on during testing and just see what kind of noise output we get with these at their maximum RPM. And then last but not least, we got the actual cooler itself. Uh, as typical with all-in-one CPU coolers, this is an aluminium core radiator. It's got a nice smooth looking and satin black finish to it. That looks to be applied nice and evenly and covers the radiator well. There's also braided sleeving on the tubing to give it a premium look. And then as you can see, we've got these caution stickers uh, next to the tubing. And there's one on the bottom of the radiator and that is just a caution to say that if you tamper with this label, the warranty will be void. And this is actually where the EPDM anti-leak rubber bag is fitted to the radiator. And you can see the CPU block is made up of a plastic housing. Uh, it's not a bad looking plastic, it looks of a reasonable quality. I'm not too keen on this open and close label here, that probably would have looked better either etched into the plastic or embossed. You can obviously remove this label if you don't like the look of it, but would have looked a bit more premium if that was, like I say, like embossed into the plastic housing itself. The top portion of the CPU block just twists and removes and then inside you've got this Gamer Storm logo which you can either take out, you can replace it with the blank or you can spin it round, put it on a different into a different location depending how you've got the CPU block oriented inside the case. And then this top portion of the CPU block, this lights up in RGB and then with the lid back on there's a kind of a thin line that runs around the circumference of the CPU block which also lights up in RGB lighting and then the top of the CPU block has got this two-way mirror design. So at the radiator side the tubing is in a fixed position uh, and then you can see at the CPU block side we've got these articulating 90 degree elbow fittings. They just make it a little bit easier when you're trying to uh, maneuver the CPU block into position over the CPU socket and then at the base of the cooler you've got this quite a large copper microchannel cold plate perfectly big enough to cover any mainstream desktop platform but if you're intending on using this on AMD TR4 or TRX40 um, you're going to be struggling to get full coverage of the Threadripper heat spreader so it may not be optimal or it may not be the perfect solution, but at least you've got that option to use it on that high-end platform. So I think we'll get this installed onto the test bench now. We've actually had a slight upgrade on the test bench. We're now using a Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Extreme motherboard with a Intel Core i9-9900KS CPU. So that'll allow us to probably push the 
frequency a little higher than we did on our old system with the 9900K and should give us a good opportunity to see just how good this 280EX is at thermal performance. So for the first part of the installation on our test bench we like to install the fans first. To do this you just need to decide whether you want to fit the fans in a pull or push configuration. We're going for a push configuration so we'll place the fans that way around. And then all you need to do is take the eight long black screws and then use a Phillips screwdriver to tighten the fans into position. And then next we need to prepare the CPU block. So take the two Intel upper mounting brackets, place them aligned with the screw holes and then just use the four countersunk Phillips screws to tighten the brackets into position. Next we need to prepare the motherboard for the installation. So take the universal backplate, put the Intel standoffs in the corresponding holes and then just secure those in position with the plastic clips. There's obviously a total of four standoffs and four plastic clips needed. And then with the backplate assembled, just drop it into position using the mounting holes around the CPU socket and then flip the motherboard back around the correct way up. The cooler does actually come with a pre-applied thermal coating but that's been removed for our video purposes. So we'll just apply some thermal compound to the center of the CPU heat spreader. And then you just need to lower the CPU block onto the CPU aligned with the standoffs. And then using the thumb screws, fix the CPU block in position. It's best to tighten the thumb screws up finally in kind of an X shape pattern from corner to corner. This just helps to spread the thermal compound and get a nice even contact with the CPU block and the CPU heat spreader. So for the final part of the installation we need to connect the two fans to the provided fan splitter and then connect the other end of the cable to the CPU fan header on the motherboard and connect the three pin pump power cable to the CPU option header. And because our motherboard does have a 5 volt addressable RGB headers, we'll connect the RGB cable from the pump unit to the extension cable and then connect the extension cable to the 5 volt uh, addressable RGB header. And that's the installation complete. So as you can see, the cooler is installed in our test bench now. Everything's up and running, working as it should be. It's not too difficult a process. There is some slight um, preparation of the motherboard and the CPU block to get it installed but we'd expect even the most novice PC builder to not have too many difficulties installing it. On our test bench, it takes approximately 15 to 20 minutes to install. It might take a little bit longer inside a case, but again, it's not a long process. We've got the RGB lighting connected up to our motherboard header so we can control the various different RGB lighting colors and patterns using the Gigabyte RGB Fusion software. And alternatively, if your motherboard doesn't have any RGB headers, there's always the uh, simple RGB hub that's supplied in the box. And again, you can use that to scroll through the various different RGB lighting effects and colors and patterns. So now let's check out the thermal performance. To do this, we've devised a series of tests using IDA64 to put 100% load on the CPU. We have uh, two different tests that we run, one with the pump and the fan speeds all set at 100% RPM so that can test the raw thermal performance of the cooler and then we also run another noise normalized test with the noise levels set to 40 decibels and if you want to check out the full details of the testing procedure there will be a full written review of this CPU cooler over on the Kiguru website so head over there and you can check that out so now let's have a look at the figures. So in terms of raw thermal performance with the pump and fan speeds running at their maximum RPM, the Deepcool Castle 280EX performs very well. It produces very similar thermal performance to other closed-loop coolers of its size and offers a slight improvement in performance over its smaller brother, the Castle 240EX. Even with the Intel Core i9-9900KS running at an all-core frequency of 5.1 GHz, the Castle 280EX shows it is capable of handling the heat output of a high-end overclocked CPU. And then during our noise normalized test with the Intel Core i9-9900KS configured to a all-core frequency of 4.7 GHz, 
Again, the Castle 280X performs very well, just a couple of degrees Celsius behind the 360mm NZ XT Kraken X73, which is quite impressive since this is a smaller and much cheaper AIO solution. And then in our maximum noise levels test, the Deepcool Castle 280EX sits more or less in the middle of our chart. The 46.6 decibel noise output is noticeable, but not too distracting, and it is considerably quieter than the Castle 240EX with its 120mm fans. If you are not too worried about maximum noise levels, then the Castle 280EX could be a worthy contender for your next build. So my overall opinion on the Deepcool Castle 280EX is it seems like a good value and a good all-round all-in-one CPU cooler. You've got a kind of understated look of the radiator and the plain black fans, and then that's enhanced with the small but noticeable RGB lighting on the CPU block. And then in terms of the thermal performance, again, we've been really impressed with the Castle 280X. In terms of cost, it's a lot cheaper than some other all-in-one CPU coolers out on the market of a similar size, so again, you're getting a good price to performance value. CPU Socket Sport is also very good with this CPU cooler. It covers all mainstream desktop platforms as well as your high-end desktop AMD platforms and installation. It's very quick, very simple, and there's no additional uh, fan controllers or RGB controllers necessary. So it cuts the installation time down and also gives you a nice and tidy final appearance. Then you've got the nice little addition of the removable top cover on the CPU block which allows you to change the orientation of the Game of Storm logo or you can even add your own logo using the blank logo plate that's provided. So you should be able to pick this up on Amazon UK now. We're not entirely sure of the price at the moment but it should be good value uh, based on the prices of the 240 and the 360mm version and it is probably a CPU cooler that I would have on my list if I'm building some kind of mid-range gaming system in the future. So I hope you enjoyed watching our review of the Deep Cool Castle 280EX all-in-one CPU cooler. If you have, then don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. You can also head over to our Facebook and Twitter pages where you can discuss what you think of this CPU cooler and other hardware that we've reviewed in the past with other KitGuru readers and viewers. I've been James for KitGuru. Thank you for watching.